Let our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the promised one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I will I live to do your will. Some of you wanted me to sing that, I'm sure. It wouldn't have been pretty if I were to sing it. Why did I do the beginning or one of the songs from Hold an Evening Prayer this morning on Palm Sunday? What, what is today? What is the date today? March 25th, which is exactly how many months till Christmas? Nine. So today is the celebration of the Feast of the Annunciation, which is when the angel Gabriel came to Mother Mary and said to her, you are going to bear a child. Today is the day that we celebrate that Gabriel went to Mary. Today is the day that we celebrate Jesus entering the holy city. Today is the day we continue our journey with Christ to the cross. And why is this day so important? To understand his entry into the city, understand who he is and what he's done for us, to understand what we expect Jesus to be, and to actually see what Jesus is for us. You see, Jesus on this day, in the Gospel of John, we get him entering the city. We read two Gospel passages this morning. We read ch chapter 12 out in the narthex, right, which is the triumphal entry, which gives us a little bit more than Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where they just give us the story of Jesus getting a, a donkey, riding it into the city, being Herod the king. This morning we get some Greeks asking if they can see Jesus. This morning we have the lesson of Jesus riding a donkey into the city and people waving branches of palm. I've said this before, but do you realize that John's Gospel is the only Gospel that has palms in it? We've been celebrating Palm Sunday for centuries, but only the Gospel of John talks about palms. Luke, Matthew, and Mark talk about branches from the trees, or leafy branches, or they spread their cloaks on the ground. John is the one that tells us that they did palm branches. And why is the palm branch important, and why do we call this Palm Sunday? Does anybody know? Other than the fact that we just like to have stuff that we can tickle the ears of the people in front of us, right? <laughs> It's not what it's about. Or we want something that we can fold into a great and nice little cross, right? Is that what it's about? We want to be able to make a cross shape so that we can show our friends the great things that we can do with, with greenery from church? You see, the, the symbol of a donkey and the symbol of a palm mean something in Jesus' day. Because they would have known from the reading this morning the, the, the passage from from the Old Testament that it said your king will ride into the city on a donkey. And a donkey is, is one who bears a leader who comes in peace. And a, and a donkey is a way that someone enters not in a military style victory, but in a victory of something that is going to be, be wonderful and peaceful for all of those who are involved. And, this, and Jesus riding in on this donkey shows us this. That he's not here to do a military victory. That he's here to be a king who reigns in peace. And they start with their palm branches waving in the air, which is probably something that Jesus didn't necessarily want them to do. What do the palm branches represent? Well, the palm branches represent a military-style victory, where a ruler has come in and has taken over what was once held by others and is now being taken into the rule of a new king. And it's a military-style victory, and that is what the people actually wanted from Jesus, right? That's what we want. We want God to be a God that comes in and takes control and does everything that we need for Him to do, and does everything that we want for Him to do. We want Him to be the God that gives us the lives that He proclaimed that we're going to have, and they're going to be great, and they're going to be peaceful, and there's going to be no problems. 
Right? That's what God told us we were going to have, right? That we were going to have long, peaceful lives with no issues. Yeah, I don't remember reading that anywhere either, for those of you that are wondering. No, it's not in my Bible. I'm sure it's not in your Bible either. Right? God didn't say that we weren't going to have problems. But that's what we want God to be. This great and all-powerful king who takes away all of the issues, who makes everything to just be peaceful. And that's not what God did. You see, because God came, rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and then was taken and arrested, and beaten and tried for the crimes that we should be put on trial for. Jesus was taken before Pilate, and he was questioned and humiliated. He was beaten and scorned. He was derided. As Isaiah says, he was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes we are healed. Right? Isaiah says that. That because of the stripes, and what are the stripes? They come from the, Christopher? They come from the, what did they do to Jesus 39 times? They whipped him. Those stripes come from him being whipped. And those are the things that heal us. Because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And by his stripes we are healed. Right? Jesus heals us because of what he did for us. It's a little hard to try to do this and talk to you at the same time and not pay attention to what I'm doing. Now. So, um, Jesus did that for us on this day. And that's what this day is truly about. I can show you how to do that later if you want. It's not about fancy palm crosses. It's not about our hands. It's about a military victory. And a victory that is won even though we don't see it being won. Because in our other passage this morning from the Gospel of John, John chapter 19, we see the continuation of the story that we've been walking through as a congregation now for weeks. Right? Jesus was before Pilate. Pilate condemns him to death and he's handed over to them to be crucified. And they take Jesus. And unlike the other Gospels where Jesus is met by a man named Simon of Cyrene who takes his cross and carries it the rest of the way for him to Golgotha, Jesus carries his own cross all the way. And they take him there and they crucify him. And they crucify him with two other criminals. One on his right and one on his left. And why is this important? Because Jesus is hung up with the very people that he came to die for. You and me. That's you and me with him. Don't be startled by that. That's you and me with him. Because he identifies with us and he understands our hurtings and our longings and our lives. And he gave it up for us. And there was a sign written by Pilate. It's interesting this morning that our reading is only a short reading that they crucified him. They hung him on the cross between two thieves. And there was a sign written above him that many Jews read because he was close to the city where they were. And the sign said, this is the king of the Jews. And it was written in Hebrew and in Latin and in Greek. Why? They can't hear you back. John can't hear you. He's sleeping. Wake him up. So everyone could read it. So everyone could read it. It was written in Hebrew because that was the language of the Jews. That was the language of those who had brought Jesus to be killed. It was written in Greek because that was the language of the, of the Gentiles. That was the, the language that people would have known. It was written in Latin because the higher educated in Rome would have known Latin. So everybody in this area could read this sign. It wasn't just for the Jews. It was for everybody. Right? Because in our, in our reading out there, there were some Greeks that went to Philip and then said, that, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip went to Andrew. And Philip and Andrew went to Jesus and said, There's some people here that want to see you. And Jesus said, Bring them on in. Let's talk to them. Not quite. He said, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if that single grain dies, it produces... Much fruit. If you save your life, you'll lose it. If you lose your life, you will gain it. And everyone will see me. And when would everyone see him? Right? 
right there on that cross. When he was lifted up and there was a sign placed above his head that said, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews, written in Hebrew and in Latin and in Greek, or today written in hooked on phonics and text language and did you write that in emojis? If you didn't see it, actually, there was a, a pastor friend of mine who shared, actually, the, the Holy, Week, Holy Week story through emojis. I'll find it for you later if you want to see it. It's, it's actually quite wonderful. It was written in languages everybody could understand, because that's what he did. He loved you so much that he rode a donkey and to proclaim himself to be king. And then died for the simple fact that he was king. Not a king that we wanted him to be. Not a king that even Pilate thought that he could be. But the king that God sent him to be. To help us see our lives. And how our lives need to mimic his. And share his love with all the world. Because you see the triumphal king that won that victory. The way the world nor those who herald him had ever expected it to go. And everyone gets to come and see him. Because he was hung for all of us. The Greeks that asked Philip and Andrew, everybody that wants to do. Just as Jesus asked his first disciples in the Gospel of John when they followed after him, what are you looking for? Come and see. Jesus invites every one of us to come and see. The Greeks, the Hebrews, and all of the world. Because we can all go and tell everyone we know the love that God has given to us. And that he invites every last one of us to come and see.